Tonight on Philly Sports Spotlight, we break down the progress of Eagles rookie quarterback Nick Foles following his fourth straight start and look ahead at some possible QB backups for next season. The NHL lockout nearing its 100th day, a few words from some members of the National Hockey League Players Association. And we wrap up our look at Philadelphia's City Six basketball programs with a focus on Penn, Drexel, and bragging rights on 33rd Street. Hello and welcome to Philly Sports Spotlight. I'm Phil Andrews and some very disappointing news this week uh, concerning Andy Reid, his family and the Eagles organization. As you know, back during training camp, Andy Reid's son Garrett was found dead in his dorm room following an overdose from heroin. Well, this week, the Northampton District Attorney John Morganelli released his final report on the Garrett passing and it uh, isn't good from this standpoint that they found a bag in Garrett's room with 19 vials of steroids, 64 needles, 47 syringes against steroids. Football team, not good. Andy Reid, following this news, released this statement. The statement saying, Today's report saddens me greatly, but only confirms the troubles Garrett encountered in the final years of his life. As parents, we're encouraged by his apparent process or progress, but like addicts, he was able to conceal the signs of relapse. I cannot apologize enough for any adverse appearances that my son's actions may have had for an organization and community that has been nothing but supportive of our family. Shortly following Andy Reid's statement, team owner Jeff Lurie released this statement concerning Garrett Reid's connection to the steroids. The news on Garrett Reid's possession of steroids is disappointing. It's clear the conduct in which he apparently engaged runs counter to the values and principles mandated for everyone associated with our organization. We have spoken to the league office and have pledged our full cooperation with their requests should there be any. Joining us now uh, on the set of uh, Philly Sports Spotlight is former Eagle tight end Ken Dunnick. And when you hear this story, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, Phil, this seems to be another black eye for an organization that has been bombarded with nothing but bad news this season. And it's especially difficult news because of the implication here. Not only was Garrett Reed Andy Reed's son, but he was also the assistant strength and conditioning coach. So uh, being caught with steroids is not good. Does it implicate other players? Was he just using himself? I guess those are all questions that remain to be seen. Well, the one thing that Andy Reid did, did go on to say following this news is that uh, he didn't think that any of this had an effect on his team this year, but I'm sure that deep down inside, it must have uh, been straining on him all season long. It's a major distraction. You could see where the passing of his son and then the implications that go with that could be disconcerting. I mean, you know, this, this has just been one nightmare of a season for the Eagles, and this is just the latest chapter. You know, and somebody commented, you know, if, if you ever thought that Andy Reid was going to leave, then this is probably one of the things. I mean, as an owner, you probably want to distance yourself from this kind of thing. I mean, I know that he and, and Andy Reid have been longtime friends, but given the way the last couple of seasons have gone and this latest news, you know, from the fan base standpoint, I'm pretty sure that uh, you, you got to kind of let Reid move on and, and do his thing. Yeah, I don't think there was much question about it even before this news broke, but this is really just the final straw, and I'm pretty sure Andy Reid will be moving on. Okay, well, there are going to be some changes. We know that this much, probably at head coach and a couple of other positions. The one thing, though, that doesn't look like it's going to change, uh, as of right now anyway, is, uh, is the quarterback. Now, the end is near, and I'm not talking about the Mayan prophecy. I'm talking, of course, about this Eagle season. Just two games remaining, uh, one each against the Redskins and Giants. Last time out, the Birds on the losing end of a 34-13 fiasco to the Bengals. Of course, the previous four weeks... Fans have had a chance to perhaps look at their future quarterback as rookie Nick Foles made his fourth consecutive start. Foles unable to build on his previous start in which he uh, he uh, threw for a rookie uh, ran for a uh, threw for a rookie record 381 yards and also 32 completions, but uh, still flash some signs that he has the tools to be a starter in the National Football League. As a matter of fact, let's take a sneak peek at Foles' uh, last four starts over the, that period of time. You can see he started against the Panthers in the first game after Michael Vick suffered that concussion, and then he played against the Cowboys. His best game in the four-game stretch was that one against uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, 32 attempts, 51 uh, completions, 381 passing yards. He had two TD passes, and he also ran for a touchdown pass. Uh, that uh, 381 yards, of course, was the rookie record. Guess what? In, against the Bengals, his numbers were not great, but if you see there, his first interception in 169 uh, passing uh, attempts. So that's pretty good. So that's, Ken, as, we, as we, you join us back on the set. 
those are pretty good numbers for a rookie quarterback. You go 161 passes without throwing an interception. That's what you're kind of looking for, right? Uh, minimize the turnovers. Yeah, I mean, I think he's got a chance. You know, he's a big kid with a strong arm. He showed some poise in some difficult situations with this offensive line. Uh, he's got the tools to be a starting quarterback in this league, in my estimation. And he's gotten some valuable experience having started the last three or four games here. Of course, a lot of Eagle fans, uh, you know, you get spoiled. You look at some of the other rookies around the league. Of course, we're talking about premier rookies, though, you know, in RG3 and, 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 and Luck. I mean, this is a, a rookie quarterback who didn't, you know, uh, get a chance to play earlier in the season. But you see when he gets into the game, he reads the game well. He gets rid of the ball, which is something Michael Vick didn't do. He's bigger, like you said, so he takes a hit better. And I tell you what, he's got a bit of a gun. He can get the ball downfield. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a reason why Luck and RG3 were the top two picks in the draft. I mean, these guys are extremely talented. They don't come along every Every year. Foles has got a chance to be a very good quarterback. And remember, just because you're not picked number one or number two doesn't disqualify you for being a great quarterback. Tom Brady was a six round pick. Now, now we're almost sure that Foles will be ne here next year. Of course, a lot of it depends on who the head coach is. You know, lots of times when, when new head coaches come in, they want to bring their own guys in. But, you know, if I'm a head coach coming in, why not give the kid a chance? One thing we're pretty sure of, Michael Vick probably will not be here next year because of the money that he's due. Uh, he's estimated to make $16.5 million next year, only $3 million of which, I say only, $3 million of which is guaranteed. Now, your feeling, Ken, is that uh, the Eagles probably will release him so they don't have to pay him that nut, right? Yeah, I think they're going to release him a couple days after the Super Bowl. I don't think they're going to pay him that $3 million bonus. I certainly don't think they're going to pay him $16.5 million next year. So it looks like Michael Vick has played his last game in Philly. Okay, so if Nick Foles is going to be your starter, who do you suggest the Eagles look at maybe as a backup or maybe another possible starter? Maybe Nick Foles still has that learning curve. You've got five guys that you're interested in, right? Yeah, there's some interesting names floating around out there. We'll start out first with Joe Flacco, local kid from Audubon High School who was uh, into his contract year. He's due to make 14 to $16 million per year because he's at the height of his career. But again, Baltimore could put the franchise tag on him, which may limit his ability to move to a different team. But he certainly would be a popular choice if he came back home to Philly. And I do know he's not happy because they've taken so long to, to get them. I mean, quarterback of that caliber, you want to get that taken care of. I know he's a little unhappy that they've been kind of lollygagging. Uh, there's a kid out in San Francisco right now who's not a bad quarterback. Yeah, I mean, Alex Smith was supplanted in his starting job, and he was playing very well on a team that was one play away from going to the Super Bowl next year. Alex Smith is a little more complicated. He's not due as much money as Flacco, and he's only guaranteed a million dollars for next year. Probably the unhappiness that he has regarding his situation as a starter may expedite the process that uh, he will leave San Francisco. And I think he'd look good in Eagle Green. <laughs> and sometimes it's, it's about the system you're in, correct? The next quarterback on your list is a guy who probably has just not been able to find the right fit, fit yet, right? Yeah, Carson Palmer was the number one pick in the draft a few years ago. And, of course, he had his day with Cincinnati, and now he's with Oakland. And we know how dysfunctional the Oakland Raiders can be. Uh, that team is going nowhere, and uh, they may want to start from scratch, would uh, let Carson Palmer move and maybe out east. Now, the other quarterback is a guy who's now playing behind a rookie, and, and that's a, a guy out in Seattle who you think is another guy that would fit here. I think Matt Flynn is a, 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 a possibly a starter for any team in the NFL. He was supplanted by the play of rookie Russell Wilson, who's absolutely lighting it up in the NFL this year. But, uh, you know, Matt Flynn is looking for a starting job, and the Eagles may have one for him. It's kind of funny because uh, Russell is the kind of quarterback that the Canadian Football League loves, that smallish kind of quarterback. But he's getting it done out there, and, and uh, you know what? you, you got to go with your hot hand, which is what, uh, what uh, they did in, in San Francisco. And the final guy on your list uh, is a guy you think that would be happy just to be a backup. I do. Matt Moore with the Miami Dolphins, you know, was uh, supplanted by uh, Tannehill out there. So he's the number two guy, but he's got starting experience. And he could be a very good mentor to a developing quarterback like Nick Foles. So there are five guys from Ken Dunnick's list. I know the Eagle fans probably have their list of players that they would like to see in here next year. Now, um, you talked about Michael Vick not being here next year. There are several other players on the roster right now that you think that the Eagles should think about releasing out of their contract. Yes, we're looking at uh, a few guys off the top of my head. I would say that uh, uh, Danny Watkins, who is uh, – he, he has lost his starting position, and you can consider him a bust right now as a first-round draft choice. I would highly doubt that Danny Watkins will be back in an Eagle uniform next year. Demetrius Bell, I think, is gone just because Jason Peters should be healthy and will be the starting left tackle. you got King Dunlap backing him up. 
So I think Demetrius Bell uh, will no longer be an Eagle. Kurt Coleman, you know, the safety play with the Eagles has been very, very poor this year. Uh, a lot of people like to blame the corners, but really it's because the safety help hasn't been there is the reason why teams have been able to hit these big plays. So I don't see Coleman as coming back. Now, Asamoah may be more of a financial move. I think, I think he's still got the talent to be a starting corner in the National Football League, but he hasn't adjusted to this Eagles system of defense, and the Eagles may want to cut some costs here and, and let him go. I'm, I'm sorry to laugh when you say this Eagles system of defense because we've seen two or three different kinds of defenses over the se- you know over this season, starting with a wide nine, and then you know Juan Castillo getting let go, and then you know uh, all the other changes that they made. You know these are two premier corners, and some people say that if you had better safeties, these corners would be better, and that's maybe maybe what you're talking about. You know maybe if if Namdi takes a pay cut. He could be back on the team next yeah, year. Interesting thing uh, enough, since they've let Jim Washburn in the wide nine go, the Eagles defense has played pretty well. They lost to the Bengals because of turnovers on offense and special teams, not because of their defensive play. So, you know, maybe bringing this group together for one more run with this new system is the way to go. All right, Ken Dunnick has spoken, as he always does. And, uh, you know, it's certainly going to be an interesting offseason, especially considering uh, Eagles fans are also expecting a new head coach. Thanks again to my man Ken for his insight on football. But guess what? He's coming back, this uh, media mogul of sorts, a little bit later on in the show. And I say media mogul because when he's not here on the set of Philly Sports Spotlight, this guy's the head honcho of his own magazine, editor-in-chief of of all-knowing the Jersey Man magazine. This month's issue, of course, has national talk show host Michael Smirconish on the cover and a pretty insightful article on Eagles head coach Andy Reid, a story I love the title, Time's Yours, but Time's Up. Do you have anything else to add to that? I, well, I just w- I want people to check out page nine because of, we, have, we have a great advertisement for WMCN featuring Phil Andrews. So check out a copy of Jersey Man Magazine. Go to www.jerseymanmagazine.com and, and check it out. Yeah, it's the bald man's issue coming out this month. Hey, listen, as we head to break, uh, time for this week's trivia question, if you will. Now, earlier we told you who we thought the Eagles should target this offseason as far as a possible quarterback uh, and a backup to Nick Foles or maybe even a starter. The question tonight is, who did the Eagles trade back in 1977 to acquire the Polish rifle? You know all about the Polish rifle. You played with Ron Jaworski. Marinate on that for a bit, and we'll have the answer for you a little bit later on in the show. Also coming up, we're going to talk to some members of the National Hockey League Players Association. They're going to let you know how they feel about the current NHL lockout.